Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Let us pray and seek the face of God. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, thank you for this moment. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Again, let me thank you for your presence. And uh, I want to just congratulate you because it takes determination. It takes intentionality. It takes commitment to change your condition. Things just don't happen. Anything worth having, anything worth changing requires some degree of effort. And I want to just thank you, whether you realize it or not, that these 12 known sessions that you have been availing yourself to, by the grace of God, I pray that you are being blessed. Because believe it or not, I am being blessed. And I hope you too are being blessed. Today we want to shift the focus of uh, dealing with negative emotions and to talk about how physical exercises, how physical movement can impact and can demonstrate and can bring about a change in your mood, in your character, in your behavior. Movement, exercise, very, very important. Because one of the things that you will agree with me that negative emotion does, it immobilizes you. It creates a kind of a tiredness, it zaps your energy. There is no enthusiasm. You, you, you just don't want to do anything. You want to just be still and, and, and don't bother me, etc. But I want you to know today that physical exercises, movement can bring about a change in your life. You'd be surprised that even religious people, if they were but for to move, change their location, change their position, it can impact their thinking. One of the negative emotions we want to show you today and how exercise, how movement can bring about a change is that of fear, fear. Someone has described fear as false evidence appearing real. Fear. Fear can cause you to want to go back into your old past. Fear can cause you to not want to even move forward. You've been told that you're a blessed person. You've been told that you're a wonderful person. And all of a sudden, fear stepped in. Fear took over. You remember the situation in Numbers 13 and 14 when Moses sent spies to go and look at the promised land. What did they do? They came back. Ten of them said to Moses and the crowd, the land is fabulous. The land is wonderful. The land is great. But there's some giants in the land. And we look at those giants and we ourselves saw ourselves as grasshoppers in our own eyes. It was two gentlemen, Joshua and Caleb, who showed the opposite of fear and said to the people, listen, if God delights in us, 
if God feels good about us, if God really wants us to accomplish and achieve, God will give us this land. Let's go and get it. Fear can stop you in the quest of your dreams. Fear can cause you to not want to stand up and speak up. Fear is very, very destructive. Let me put it to you that way. And I want to show you how physical movement can bring about a change. It has been said that exercise can improve your sense of control. Exercise can improve your coping ability. Exercise can cause you to improve your self-esteem. How do you feel about yourself? How do you feel you're able to cope with some things? Because sometimes the challenge of life is that we feel as though we have no ability, no power, no control to bring about a change. We think that things are as they are and there can be no change. You heard the story told about a fellow who was driving one night and uh, had a serious accident and his car went over the cliff. And as the car was going over this cliff, he was able to jump out of the car. And while going down, he was able to grab hold to a tree. And all night he was there holding on to that tree for his dear life because he knew that there was a cliff down there. And he started praying, Lord, I need you to save me. Lord, I need you to deliver me. And then he heard a voice that said, let go. But fear had him so occupied and so gripped, he will not let go. And so all night, he hung on for his dear life. And then finally, early in the morning, he decided to let go. And the moment he let go, he discovered that the distance between him and the ground was like two feet. And when he let go, he discovered all night he was suffering needlessly because of fear. Fear, my sisters and my brothers, will do it to us. Physical exercises can help in changing situations. It is said that people who exercise regularly often report how good achieving a goal makes them feel. I mean, just to get up and go to the gym, just to get up and walk, just to get up and do something, once you've done it, it makes you feel good. Exercise can distract you from negative thoughts. Let me say that again, that exercise will cause you to be distracted from the negative thought and change the way you are thinking. You see, the mind is such a powerful force. And when it dwells on something, unless you change it, it's going to take you down to the logical end. And so exercise, physical exercise, can distract you from negative thoughts and provide opportunities to try new experiences. And sometimes what we need when we are facing negative situations, we need new experiences. Why do you think people sometimes go on vacation? Why do they go on vacation? They go on vacation just to change scenery. They go on vacation just to change uh, the surrounding. Sometimes by going on a vacation, changing your surrounding, changing your positions, changing will cause you to, to think a little differently. You see, because sometimes 
what you may be experiencing, you think you're the worst off when there may be others who are worse off than you. I think I shared a story with you about this gentleman who was very hungry. He was very, very hungry. And so he decided to go and find something to eat. And when he went into this banana grove where they grew bananas, he saw a banana tree and he climbed up into the tree. And he said that he will want to be very careful and he will pick the banana and peel the banana and put it aside. And then afterwards he will eat. But in the process, as he will peel the banana, he will throw down the peeling. And somehow he didn't hear any, not any voice, any sound, because you know you have the dry leaves on the ground. It's something supposed to be heard, but there was nothing. And so eventually he decided to look down to see what was going on. And when he looked down, what he saw, there was another man at the bottom of the tree who was eating the peeling. When you think that it is worse off with you, there is always somebody else who is in a worse off situation. Yes, but physical exercise can cause you to be distracted from that negative thought, that negative idea, thinking that woe is me. I'm all undone, too bad, things are bad off for me. No exercises can do something different for you. I want us to establish that physical exercise is a call to movement. You've got to move. It is not sitting down and thinking about movement. It is actually moving. It is unfortunate that uh, many, many of us do not do enough of a physical exercise, physical workout. I remember several years ago, the Lord blessed us to go to Brazil. And one of the interesting things that I saw was how everybody we're exercising. Where we live was not too far from Coco Cabana Beach or something like that. And in the morning, you saw everybody out there. During the course of the day, you see people running up and down. If they were not at work, they were exercising. They were doing something. But physically, they were moving. They were moving. And that's why if you look at those people, they are not the victims of obesity. Exercise, physical exercise. I want to show you in scripture how exercise has to do with movement and how changing your physical position can relieve stress, can relieve fear. Physical exercise, the changing of your position can improve even your memory. Believe it or not, physical exercise can help you sleep better. Because if you've been walking, you've been exercising, it means you will get tired. And when it's time to sleep, you're asleep. Physical exercise can boost your overall mood. It makes you feel better. Let me share with you how, if you don't move, negative emotion like fear can trap you and cause you to almost lose out. I want you to come with me into the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter. God had instructed Moses to go to Egypt and to liberate and to free the people. But interestingly, God did not choose to allow them to get to the promised land by taking a short route, but instead a long route. I mean, all the way through the desert, 
all the way through the wilderness, even to the point where it ended up at the Red Sea. No boat, no canoe, no ship, nothing. God, you will bring us from bondage, from slavery, through all of this wilderness. There were times no water to drink. There were times no food, but you provided just to come here to a dead end. How many know that sometimes life looks like a dead end? You've done all you know to do. You've spent all of what you could afford just to come to what? A dead end. But may I say to you, when you come to your dead end, it is your dead end. It's not God's dead end. Because your dead end is an opportunity for God's power to demonstrate his ability to deliver you. So never ever come to a point in your life and you say, well, nothing else can happen. That's your talk. If anything, let God take over. So the children of Israel left Egypt, traveled through the wilderness, etc., And Finally, here they are at the Dead Sea, at the Red Sea, rather, at the Red Sea. How are we going to survive? I want you to listen to this, because what happened while they were at the Red Sea, you know who was behind them? Pharaoh and six hundred of his best military men, 600 of his best military chariots, 600 of his best swordsmen. He got the best of his military and they were on the chase to what? Bring the children of Israel back into bondage. I'm trying to tell somebody that people in power have no problem bringing slaves back into slavery. Why? Because slavery provides cheap labor. Slavery provides free labor in some situations. And the economists of Egypt said to Pharaoh, why did you let these people go? 600,000 of them? Do you know what that will cause the economy if we're to pay our citizens that kind of a money every month? When Pharaoh did the calculation, he saw that what the people said made some sense. And therefore, he decided we're going out here and bringing them right back here. Cheap labor, slave labor. In many, many countries, that's why they do whatever they can to keep some people poor. They keep some people under servitude, keep some people in prison. Because in some countries, believe it or not, prisoners make products for those who are not in prison. And they make something like 30 cents or 35 cents an hour or maybe a day, I don't know. But the fact about it is cheap and free labor. And so Pharaoh decided, we're gonna go and get these people to come back. I want you to see how fear can cause you to think interestingly. How fear can cause you to begin to think really negatively. Mm -hmm. Listen to the scripture. It says here in, Exodus, the fourth, 14th chapter, beginning at verse 10. Listen to this. It says here, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, when Pharaoh drew nigh, 
the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. They looked back and they could see them. They looked back and they could hear the chariots. They looked back, they could see the dust from the wheels of the chariots. And listen, and they were so afraid. They got very afraid. I'm telling you, fear can do something bad to you. And that's why it's important to overcome fear. I don't know what kind of fear you have. Maybe it's fear of darkness. Maybe fear of height. Maybe fear of people. Maybe fear of standing up to speak up for your right. I don't know what kind of fear you have, but I want you to know that if you are a child of God, you want to realize that you need to change your thinking, change your position, and overcome that fear that is paralyzing you. It says here, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses. I want you to look at this thing. They cried out to the Lord. But they didn't wait for the Lord to respond. And that's how sometimes we do. We pray to God and take another action. Listen to this. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Verse 11 says, and they said unto Moses. Listen to the kind of strange talk. Because there were no graves in Egypt. Hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt us with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Fear can make you choose bondage over your blessings. Fear can cause you to choose slavery than success. Fear can be very crippling and demoralizing, and it can affect you desperately. Fear. And the people said, God, they cried to God, but then complained to Moses. How many of us on this Zoom today call on God, but then blame others for our plight? We pray to God, but then we say somebody else is responsible for our plight, our situation. How many of us call on God, but then we turn right around and do what? Blame somebody else. What I have come to realize that God has all power. God knows everything. God is capable of bringing us out of bondage. God is capable of bringing us out of servitude. There is nothing too hard for God. When you cry out to God, wait on God for God to answer you. The people cried to God and complained to Moses. Interesting, isn't it? And listen. We're talking about physical exercise. We're saying that physical exercise has to do with movement. It has to do with shifting your position. If you're standing, walk. If you're walking, run. If you're running, do whatever it is, but you got to move this body of ours. And it says in the 13th verse, and Moses said unto the people, listen to what he said to them. He said to the people, fear ye not. That's what Moses said. Moses said to the people, do not allow fear to overtake you. Do not allow fear to override you. Do not allow fear to consume you. Don't let fear Take your dream, your hopes, your aspirations away. You were once excited about a new liberation. You were once excited about going to the promised land. You were once, what happened? Do not be 
afraid. Moses said to the people, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more forever. Whenever you allow fear to be buried, whenever you allow fear to be thrown out of the window, whenever you allow fear not to overtake you, that which is holding you back will hold you back no more. Absolutely no more. And listen to what the Lord did. The law shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So the absence of peace is the invitation to fear. When you are fearful, there is no peace. And when there is no peace of mind, peace of soul, peace of spirit, it can cause some serious damages to your brains, to your heart. Your whole system is affected when fear takes over. And that's why we have to learn how to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. That's why the hymn writer said, when peace like a river attended my way, you've taught me to say it is well with my soul. You've got to learn how to govern yourself and live in peace because the absence of peace is the invitation and the dwelling of fear. And when there is fear, you can hardly do your best. A whole lot of people are sitting and not able to move because of fear. God give you a dream. God give you an idea. Let me tell you something. When God gives you a dream, when God gives you an idea, there is nothing that says there will not be some difficulties ahead. There will not be some setbacks ahead. There will not be some disappointing days. But guess what? Do not quit. I think it must have been Helen Keller who said that you can accomplish anything if you stay with it long enough. Yes. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Listen to this now. We're talking about exercise. We're talking about movement. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Don't stand still and complain. Don't stand still and argue. Don't stand still and blame others. Don't stand still and cry all night and all day. It sounds pathetic to say that you've been crying all night and all day. But my Bible tells me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When the morning comes, it's time to dry your tears. It's time to stand up. It's time to lift your head up and move forward. And God told Moses, tell the people to do what? Go forward. Don't stand still. Don't be afraid. How many of us on this Zoom at this hour are standing still because of somebody, some system, some situation that we are afraid of? You've heard it said that fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't let fear cripple you. Do not allow fear to hold you hostage. Move forward. Get up, do something, lift up your hand, lift up your legs, exercise. When you find yourself about to 
go into a state of depression, when you find yourself about to go into a rage of anger, if you find it, get up and do something. There was this gentleman, this elderly man. I asked him, he said he'd been married some 50 plus years. And I said, how were you able to be married that long? What are some of the hidden secrets to your being together that long? And he said, one of the things that I do, especially in the area of anger, in the area of disappointment, in the area that I'm not pleased with what has happened, what I would generally do, I would take my hat and go for a walk. And by the time I come back, Generally, that spirit of anger, that spirit of disappointment, that spirit of disgust, that unpleasant feeling of depression generally is gone because I went for a walk. We're talking about physical exercises as the ingredient to help you overcome the negative emotions in your life. In this particular instance, we're talking about fear. And you may say, well, doctor, what if I cannot see? What if I cannot walk? What if I'm immobile? Well, let me tell you something what happened the other day. I went to Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is a kind of a public gymnasium where people go and exercise. When you go there, you see all kinds of people, all heights, all sizes. No one is there trying to judge anyone. Everybody's there trying to move their body, exercise their body, make it work. And something that moved me interestingly, there is an area where they said it's good only for 30 minutes. You're supposed to go in that area and work out for only 30 minutes. And I saw a gentleman in that area. But I, I, I was not going in there. I, I was going to use some other of the machines in there to work out. But when the man got through, I saw him coming out and he had a walking stick. And what did I realize? That the man was blind. Here is a blinded individual who will still have the audacity, the nerve, the enthusiasm to come into a gym. He didn't ask anybody to help him. No, with his walking stick, he will go and he will feel the machines and he will begin to work out. Oh, he could have been sitting in self-pity. He could have been sitting wallowing in sympathy, empathy, self-rejection and low self-esteem. But no, a blind man in the gym trying to work out. Another time I saw somebody walking with the walkers, looked like they had had some paralysis could hardly lift up the leg, but they were trying to get in there and whatever machinery that they could use, they were willing to do it. Physical exercises. And look what happened. The people who were so afraid and wanted to go back to Egypt 
wanted to go back to slavery, wanted to go back to die in servitude. These same people, when they listened and when they moved forward, I want you to see what happened to them. In verse 31, it says, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Once upon a time, they were crying, complaining, and blaming Moses for bringing them out into this wilderness, bringing them out into this place to die where there's no grave, where there's no way to eat free food, etc. But I've come by to tell someone, do as the people did. God told them, don't stand here and complain. Don't stand here and grumble. Move. Move forward. And I've come to say to you today, moving is a type of exercise. Movement is a type of shifting your mindset. There is a gentleman by the name of Les Brown, an American motivator, who said, when your why is big enough, you will find the how. And I've come by to tell you, consider your why. Why are you here? Why are you in this generation? Why did the Lord allow you to wake up this morning? Why did the Lord allow you to spare your life to come into 20 and 23? Many of your friends in 20 and 22, probably in 20 and 21, probably in 2020 have died and have gone, but God has spared your life. Why did he allow you to still be here? Why did he allow you to come from January and here you are now in December? Why? I believe if you stop long enough to discover your why, you will soon discover that you have a charge to keep. You have a God to glorify and a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. I believe if you stop a while to discover why you're here, you will soon discover that you have a dream, you have a goal, you have a mission, you have a divine assignment to fulfill. Yes, if you stop to discover why God has you here, you will soon discover that you are in a dark world and you are God's light to shine in the darkness. Why are you here? You have those who are worse off than you. And God has allowed you to be here to lend a helping hand. Why are you here? You are here because there have been a cloud of witnesses who kept the faith for the good fight and finished their assignment. Why are you here? Because God has promised and has made promises to you. He said, call unto me. I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why are you here? You are here because God said, if you keep his word in your mouth, and you turn not to the right or to the left, you'll bring to yourself good success. Don't let negative emotions pull you down. Don't allow negative emotions to stop you. One of the ways that you can actually change the situation is through movement. And we call it exercise. And we're talking especially about physical exercise. Walking, jogging, going to the fitness center, do something, do something, move. God told the children of Israel, and when they moved forward, everything changed. Their perspective changed. They now had a better respect for God. And I'm saying to you today, 
whatever you do, don't just sit. If it is one time a week, twice a week, three times, we're not asking you to go out here and hurt yourself. No. All we are saying is, don't sit forever. Move forward. There are benefits in physical exercises. They have all kinds, aerobics, yoga, you name it. They have it. In other words, our bodies were never ever intended to be still. Move forward and see God doing a new thing in your life. Amen.